Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, our new narrative, and today I'm starting a new series called Things I Wish I Also Learned in February. It's within the podcast, but it's going to be a special series of quick anecdotes on things I wish I also learned in February. And today we're going to start it off with the mother of all subjects, slavery, the institution of involuntary servitude. And to do this subject justice, I am going to drop a link in the description uh, of for a website that has all type of information on organizations currently fighting the fight against involuntary servitude around the world. So if you want to get involved in that, um, please feel free to check out that website. OK, so I'm going to start with putting slavery in context because uh, our Modern day context for the subject of slavery is very narrow. Typically, you know, if you ask a 10 year old, they would probably think that slavery only happened in America. So uh, I want to give some context to this subject. Now, slavery has been around as long as humans, basically. Um, if prostitution is the oldest profession, then slavery has got to be the oldest, oldest institution. Um, it traces back seven thousand years before Jesus walked earth. So not 1,000, not 2,000, not 3,000, 7,000 years. So Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, Christianity, all the way up to today. So again, check out that website and get involved. Um, but I want to bring it up to a modern day, I guess, um, and talk about its prevalence as an institution. So in every on every corner of the globe, every race, every culture has been subjected to slavery. Um, and back in the day, let's say in the 13, 1400s, you know, there, the jobs for people to do are very limited. It's not, and we often, I say that because we often judge slavery with a modern day morality, right? So today, if you're 18, 17, 25, whatever, able body, you can get a job doing pretty much anything other than physical labor. So, you know, go to McDonald's, work there, work at Google. Um, and you don't, no one's worried about getting snatched out of a drive through window and being put in slavery, right? But in 1400 AD, 1300 AD, if you weren't a landowner, if you didn't, um, you know, if you weren't rich, if you didn't have a skill like a blacksmith or something, if you weren't a soldier or warrior, you might end up being in slavery. Not saying that's was the you know a definite, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, you know, if you wanted to get stuff done and you couldn't pay people to do it, force was often used. So, how to get? How did people get involved? How did a person who wasn't a slave become a slave. Well, typically it was through war or crime um, or kidnapping. So and in some instances, you would have what I call trifling people lying on people. So there's a, I'll give you an example. In this book here um, that was written in 1859 by William O. Blake. Um, that's back in the day when people use all these initials for their names. But anyway, the book is called The History of Slavery and the Slave Trade. It was written in 1859. And there's an example of people in Africa, certain tribes in Africa where, uh, this isn't funny, but a person would, let's say a wife caught her husband cheating. She would lie and say that, hey, my husband was cheating. That's a crime where that was at. And so as a criminal, that person be shipped off into slavery, right? Um, some people, but the vast majority throughout human history, I would say people became slaves due to war, right? And that's all people, Chinese, Asian people, Chinese people, Japanese people, African people, Caucasian people, European, English, whoever, wherever, right? And Here's the thing. 
it was so prevalent that people were being, in some cases, like under Emperor Charles V. So we're going back to the 1500s, 1537, I believe this war happened, where Child, Emperor Charles V uh, invaded Algiers. Well, his big plan was to send this huge Spanish armada through Algiers and just destroy Algiers. But weather <laughs> kind of rained on his parade, literally, and he got his butt whipped. And that fleet basically got turned into slaves. They had so many slaves that they were selling slaves, white Christian slaves, as the term is called. They were selling slaves for one onion a piece. So think of your worth, man. You, you, you're a soldier one day and you're getting sold for an onion the next day. But not to be outdone, some of my uh, distant relatives were selling some of my other distant relatives for pieces of cloth, red cloth, uh, knives, um, just to get rid of them. And uh, some other some people ended up in slavery just because they couldn't afford to feed themselves. So they voluntarily went into slavery. Now, the image we have of slavery, the prominent image I have had of slavery before I started reading uh, historical books like the one in the background was that of Roots. And it was just all horrible. Right. And it was limited to a certain demographic like, you know, the great African diaspora, those who were involved in that. But. Not to discount their pain and suffering, um, but they weren't the only ones who suffered. Um, you know, there's a lot of Caucasians, um, Europeans who were ripped away from their family through, due to this horrible institution that is still prevalent today. So I'm going to remind you again, check out the website in the description. And so let's go on. I'm going to drop some names or a name, uh, probably one of the most important names in the modern day institution of slavery. And that's Antonio Gonzalez. And he rose up on the scene in 1432. It was a little while ago, about 600 years ago. And where he rolled up was New Guinea or Guinea back in the day. And, you know, he had been there several times before. And this one particular time he decided, hey, I'll take these two slaves you're selling. So, he picked up two African slaves, took them back to Spain, right? And who did he sell those two slaves to? Some Moors in Spain. So if you don't know, the Moors kind of were kind of ruling Spain from 711. I should say at least influ had a significant influence over Spain from 711 to uh, fort. 1992. And if that date sounds familiar, that's the same date that Christopher Columbus uh, set sail and stumbled across uh, what he thought was America, but he ended up in the Caribbean. Side note, no one in the world ever thought that Christopher Columbus discovered America until like 1920. Like, it's weird. But anyway, back to Antonio Gonzalez. That transaction was the first of many transactions between the Europeans, the English, and African slave traders. So in that transaction, you had Africans selling Africans into slavery to a European who sold the slave to Moors in Spain. And if you don't know Moors, check out Othello. I mean, it's a fictional character, but Othello from William Shakespeare, I mean, that's the ultimate more, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, so you got that. Um, so I, I hope this gives some a better perspective of the prevalence of slavery in our history. When I say our, I mean all of human beings. Um, every race, culture, creed has been subjected to this institution and today, people are still being enslaved. And I'm not just talking about sex trafficking. I'm talking about literally physical enslavement for labor. Um, with that, I'm going to let you go. I'll come back again with another topic uh, under 
this series called Things I Wish I Also Learned in February. All right. Talk to you later.